common things that occur commonly. Always remember that a disease can present commonly in a common or an unusual fashion, or an unusual disease can present in a common or an unusual fashion. Unlike these fancy diseases, which I've never heard of, everyone in the audience has heard of my disease, and I'll throw two nuances at you, whether you get it or you don't. Okay, I don't know where my slides are. Um, I assume they're somewhere. One more. And if I get confused, I am getting older. Um, okay, so it looks like we're talking about a 50-year-old man with fever and joint pain, and it's presented by me. Okay, just in case I forgot. Um, this guy is actually a character. He's a bull rider, very brawny guy, real tough guy, doesn't like to follow directions. Somehow stumbles upon my office, tells me everything's wrong, he hurts, he has fevers, but he knows it's from falling off the bull and getting stepped on and crushed foot and crushed ribs and whatever else has gone wrong with the guy. But um, the, the key features is that um, for quite an extensive period of time, which I think is in the next slide, well, in case it's not, the duration of the man's fevers was three years documented from 102 to 104, and other than the occasional atraumatic joint pain, which I really could never prove to be synovitis, even on very careful, thorough exam, as well as uh, contrast, contrast enhanced MRIs of the dominant hand and wrist, and a multitude of blood work, which you will see. Um, all I had was a guy with a three-year history of um, fevers and perhaps inflammatory joint pain, but I'm not convinced. So for our purposes and for my purpose at the time, this guy had fevers. And as I mentioned, um, to sort of cut to the chase here, the guy was non-toxic, he had normal vital signs, he was febrile to 102 to 104. His knees and ankles were boggy, but I will caveat this by telling you that the guy had so many injuries that even with the most careful exam, I really wasn't sure in my own mind it was this true synovitis or was it not. But whatever, it, it, they were not normal. Car uh, cardiac exam was normal, no murmur, rubber, gallop. Chest was clear to auscultation. Abdomen was soft, non-tender. Um, EXT probably meant extremities and it's above. Head ears, nisos, and throat, extraocular motions were normal. There was no trauma. The pupils were reactive. Um, the, the significant things, he had a very high set rate, ranged in the 80 to 100 range. C-reactive protein was very high. Urinalysis was normal. He had a slight elevation in white count. If I recall, it was 10 to 14,000. Mildly anemic, 10 and between 10 and 11 grams. Um, all the standard stuff that everybody would order on your initial valuation. ANA, rheumatoid factor, CCP, hepatitis B and C, MPO, PR3, all normal. I really was sort of at a loss with this guy. He had the per per um, perfunctory x-rays. They were all normal except for trauma seen that it, it tr trauma in the feet and osteoarthritis of the knees. knees excuse me. Um, I did a bone scan. I was kind of grasping for straws. I didn't know if he had an infection, a malignancy, a rheumatologic disease, or something else. Um, he had a, the bone scan, I'm sorry, did show rib fractures which uh, were related to his uh, rodeo history. I uh, did a CAT scan of his chest, abdomen, and pelvis. This was normal. There was no, no adenopathy, uh, no organal megaly, nothing to suggest a malignancy. He had an uh, uh, infectious disease consultation from somebody who I respect. There was no, uh, no infection. He had a hematology evaluation. I was you know, happy and I felt that there was no cancer. Before I made any other decisions about this guy, I wanted to put in my own head, you know, what's going on? What am I missing? This guy has a real disease. Nobody walks around with bona fide fevers of this. And then he has the set rate in CRP. So on my own, I added to the differential the autoinflammatory diseases. Um, and if I didn't put it there, in addition to checking him for pyrin traps, uh, hyper IgD, and cryoporphyrins, 
I believe I checked him for um, porphyrias. I did both 24-hour urine porphyrins as well as the delta amino levulanic acid, um, looking for both, uh, although this was, there was nothing acute and intermittent, but I did check him for acute intermittent porphyria as well as porphyria cutanea tarda. So, um, I don't remember what the next slide is, but what I'm gonna say at this point is now I need to know, no, actually, all right, I'm just confusing myself. This guy got lost to follow up um, for a considerable period of time. The guy came back to me, we'll call it a year later. It could be 18 months, it could be 12 months, 16 months, but the guy came back to me with severe shortness of breath and he looked extraordinarily toxic. There was no question that with no labs needed, you'd look at the guy and you would assume he was about to die. He happened to not be cyanotic, but he couldn't breathe. Okay, with that information, what would somebody do at this point and what does anyone think at this point? How long has been going on? Um, three to four years. No, the shortness of breath was um, uh, more acute. Uh, we're in the weeks to months range at the most. No, the shortness of breath became, ins it was insidious onset, three to four months, and it became progressively worse to the point where he had abandoned me because basically, I mean, I recall he said to me, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, there's nothing wrong with me. He came back crying, if you can help me, I'll, you know, I'll kiss your feet. So he came back begging for help. And so let, let's call it three months of an insidious, progressive shortness of breath. But he still had the fevers. They never went away. No, no, he did not have uh, classic constitutional symptoms. But he looked sick. Hang on. I'm sorry? Giant cell arteritis with aortic dissection. Okay, terrific, that's your thought. So uh, based on your thought, um, and perhaps the fever for three years could be explained by this occult vasculitis, based on that, what test would you order? <laughs> okay, but that's not a test, that's a comment. And I, I agree with your comment, but um, so you have this guy and you think he has an aortic dissection, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna do a CAT scan. I didn't say you're wrong, but somebody else said something. Blood culture. Blood culture. Okay, terrific, it's negative. Blood culture's negative. Blood culture's negative. Blood culture's ne CPD or chronic pain. All negative. How about I just tell you, there's no infection in this case. No pleural effusion, no pericardial effusion. Eosinophil's normal. Ferritin level was, um, Elevated commiserate with acute phase reactants between 500 and 1,000. Well, why do you care what his ferritin was? And do you think it's diagnostic of stills to have a high ferritin? Good, but I don't either. Next. Huh? Venus Doppler of what? Thinking for three years of fever? Okay. Wasn't done. Wasn't done. Okay. You got the answer? Terrific. I'll give you my iPad. What is it? <laughs> cardiac echo. I like that. You said you want a cardiac echo, but you're looking for a myxoma. I like that. Guess what I did? After his chest x ray was negative, I got a cardiac echo. Um, I'm not going to turn the slide because I forgot what the next slide is, but I'm going to tell you what the cardiac echo showed. I can turn the slide, hang on. Okay, um, well, hang on, we're gonna get to the cardiac echo. So here's the deal. I thought for three years that this guy had acute, on, uh, sorry, adult onset stills disease. And I don't really think I had a reason to believe he didn't. Because with or without possible synovitis and a three year history of reasonably high fevers and a high set rate in CRP with a negative ANA rheumatoid factor PR3 and so on, I basically said, you know, you must have adult onset stills disease. And this guy was frankly angry with me because I said, well, 
I might be able to help you, but I might not. But I always caveat these people when I tell them, and this is more for the fellows, I think, because guys like John, they know this. You know, there's never a right answer. You just have to hedge your bets and try to tell them that we, you know, an abnormal test is helpful, but a normal test is useless. So anyway, I thought the guy had stills. Um, I got him uh, some methotrexate, couldn't wean the steroids. Poorly compliant guy. This is your Mr. Macho Rodeo guy. I will not take anything. It took me a long time to get Kinneret uh, ordered and, and approved because I believed he had stills and I didn't have anything else to do for this guy. Um, so then the guy disappeared. Just never saw him again. I thought he hated me. He said he hated me. And then three years later, he came back with a shortness of breath um, that in the prior year, and he also had some numb legs. Neuro gave him a diagnosis of Guillain-Barre, and I'll tell you right now, that's, that's uh, superfluous, and it's actually incorrect, just for, the, for, you know, just for moving along. Okay, procedure was performed. We already went through that. The procedure was an echocardiogram, and you're looking for a myxoma. You agree that it's a myxoma. Probably some other people agree with it's myxoma. I'll tell you all one thing. You're all wrong. Okay, um, can I turn the slide? You sure? Yeah. 